Shit, if you're going to do that, I'm going to What's going on, guys? We are live with Beastly Thoughts Live episode... What episode is it? It's 88. What's going on, fellas? <laughs> What's up, brother? Something <laughs> seems to hurt by your voice. I can't... <laughs> you, you like that? You like that? I've been working on my vocal range, you know? Getting it... You, you know, stretching you, out my... Stretching out my vocal character. <laughs> been uh, doing that, that, that very white voice... Uh, Control session. You know, I started eating chitlins, and all of a sudden my voice got deeper. I don't know what happened. <laughs> was that racist? That might have been racist. I'm sorry if it was. <laughs> Our channels are getting copyrighted now. Yeah, right? <laughs> Strike. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Beastly thoughts. Here we are again, man. A great week. A lot has happened. Uh, had a lot of fun playing a lot of video games, and that's how we always start our show. So, Briar Rabbit. What yeah. have you been playing this week? Dude, I have been playing, obviously, uh, Halo. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. it's been Destiny. It was the hard mode this weekend. Uh, it opened up at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern on Friday, uh, and I believe we completed it at 1.30 a.m. on Saturday. Wow. <laughs> so we, wow. we ran through it with the, uh, Beast, um, the BC Thoughts crew, the Planet Destiny crew. Oh, you love us, Briar. <laughs> That's right. I do love you. I do love you, man. And uh, it was a epic, like, it was really an epic journey. So what eventually happened, right, is we actually got through the hard mode, no problem, until we got to Oryx. I'd say we were at Oryx within about an hour and a half. What? And then, yeah. We, and then once we hit Oryx, uh, we basically got gear checked. Uh, we were all around, I'd say, 308, 309 light level. And nobody got really spectacular drops from our first run through. Uh, and then we spent the next, I'd say, two to three hours just banging our heads against the wall with Oryx. <laughs> um, we just couldn't get it done. They added new mechanics with Oryx's fight, where there's now there's now these knights, the Light Eater knights, that you have to kill after you kill the Oryx before you can go to, or after you kill the ogres before you can go to the middle to actually start doing damage to Oryx himself. Uh, and these knights add a level of, I'll say, timing that was really, it was beyond us because we just couldn't get everything done. We couldn't kill the ogres, kill the knights, and survive and get to the middle. Uh, so what we ended up deciding to do is actually run through on our second and third characters through the hard mode up till the orcs fight, try and get more drops, try and get more gear that we could then move to our main characters and then, Jeez. you know, get up to light level 311, 312. That was and a then good idea. Get to, you know, actually be Oryx. Of course, that took a lot of time. And uh, it worked, though. So we were able to beat Oryx by, you know, kind of combining our all the drops we got from all our characters. By the end of it, I think the average on our group was about 311. Uh, and I'd say that's about the minimum I'd recommend for doing the Oryx fight. Uh, you can get up to Oryx, no problem, at like 308 light. Like, if everybody on your team is like 308, it's not really that big a deal. Um, but once you hit Oryx, man, it is a gear check. Like, all the enemies are a little more difficult. There's more enemies than what you're used to seeing in the normal mode. And the added mechanic of having those knights means that you just have to be that much quicker. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a tough fight. Um, I mean, it... Within a week, it'll be you know commonplace. Everybody will just be running hard mode. Everybody will have forgotten about normal mode, uh, and we'll be doing it on stream with you know viewers, which would be awesome. Yeah. But, uh, the first time, man, it was like we were just getting really hard gear checks. That's how it was with the original uh, King's Fall too. When that came out around the time the launch of the Taken King, like everybody was like, "This is so difficult. Like it's gonna be impossible to solo this," and like everybody's gonna be doing their jobs. But now, weeks on, it's just it's like commonplace. Like you know what you're doing. Everybody knows they're Kind of rules, and it's e a lot easier than it was at first. I think. Yeah, it yeah, really is. I mean, I when I first completed that, I was like, "There's no way we're going to be doing this on stream with viewers. Like, there's no way." Yeah. Uh, and within a week, we we had done it like plenty of times, right? And now, I, I think the same thing will happen. It's that first time was really difficult, but once everybody kind of goes through a few times, gets the timing down, gets exactly what needs to happen down, and gets that gear, right? That that new gear is sweet. It's all blacked out. It looks awesome. <laughs> like it really, it's really cool gear for hard mode raid. Uh, once people start hitting 311, 312, 313, you can get up to 320. Once people are geared up for it, I don't think it's going to be that big an issue. Wow. Yeah. 
so so again, that's twelve hours. I was just reading an article that someone actually beat that a team, a fire team beat that in ninety minutes. Yeah, yeah. So they had to really be pushing the envelope to do that. Wow. Well, part of part of that too is going to be uh, how lucky you were in the weeks leading up, right? Uh, I had been supremely unlucky. I had not gotten a, a raid helmet on any character that I had. The highest uh, light level I had for any character was 308. And that was, I mean, that was really pushing it. Like, I couldn't even use the gear I wanted to use to hit 308. I couldn't use the weapons I wanted to use to be 308. I had to use, you know, just lucky stuff that I had gotten. But there were people who had gotten the raid helmet. There were people who had gotten all the gear already and could hit 310 so that when they were going through that first time, they clicked over to 311, right, by getting, like, a lucky chest drop, Mm -hmm. you know, that first time through. So when they got to Oryx for their first time, they were at 311, 312, and that makes it a hell of a lot easier. Unfortunately, our raid team just not that lucky. No, although I want to say, like, you know, the guys who did it in the 90 minutes, that takes skill no matter how how high level you are. Yeah, I mean... But, uh, yeah, there's a serious gear check on Oryx this time, like big time. All right. Well, Robbie, what have you been doing this week? This week I have been playing a ton, especially the last couple days. My excitement for Halo 5 is going through the roof because obviously yeah. this yeah. week... Me too. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> obviously the big release this week is going to be Halo 5. comes out on Tuesday. Tuesday. I have been playing so much the Master Chief Collection because I am so heavily anticipating Halo 5. Like, I love... The beta, and it's been almost a year since that beta too, and I love the multiplayer. I can't wait to get into it. Like I'm so excited. I have a couple of my friends. We are going to be playing the campaign as soon as the game unlocks. We're going to be doing four players. I cannot wait. It is going to be incredible. I am just, I've been just playing Halo pretty much. I, I'm really trying to get back into it. Awesome, awesome, and that, I guess that encompasses your whole week. Yeah, pretty much. Just, uh, just getting back into the groove of things. All right. Yeah. Now, what I've done this week is something a little bit different. I haven't played any Destiny this week. I may have played one or two hours of it all week. Um, but Friday, I went and, and went onto the PlayStation Network, went to the store, and I bought some games. Uh, I told you guys that I just got a race, so it's like I can buy more games than I want to now. Nice. I, I, went, I went on and I picked up Batman Arkham Knight, which I still haven't played, and I got Until Dawn for PlayStation. Oh, 4. nice. Until Dawn has been... The focal point of my day since I, I put it in and started playing it, it's an amazing game, man. Um, I didn't expect it to be as good as it is so far because I played and beat Heavy Rain. I played and beat uh, Beyond Two Souls. I'm used to this role-playing movie type of experience, but I think they've really changed the whole paradigm of how these games are played. You're, you're given slightly more maneuverability in the world. Uh, the decisions you make are, are vast, and they truly affect the outcome of what's happening. Um, I, I've probably gotten seven or eight hours in. Uh, I've lost a few members. I think it starts off with like seven or eight people. I lost some people who I didn't want to lose. You know, we're guys. We don't ever want to lose a woman. Well, so losing, losing a good woman pisses you off, but you lose the, the, the evil bitches. That's just fun to watch. But I lost a couple, uh, a couple people. I feel bad about it. But the good thing about this game is uh, there is a way for you to save everyone. So you can actually go through the entire game without losing anybody, which to me would be extremely hard because how long the game is and all the decisions you make and how it may affect certain things. But I'm going to play it the first time through just to see where I get, what kind of inning I get. I think there's like 25 innings on this game. So there's a lot of replayability. And then maybe the next time or the time after that, I'll play through and try to figure out how to save everybody. But I'm really enjoying it. Kate's playing uh, Batman Arkham Knight right now. She's enjoying that. Uh, and I'm, I'm really surprised at the graphical fidelity of the game. It's one of the, the prettiest PS4 games I've seen on the console. When I first booted it up and installed it, I was looking at it, and I didn't know if they were going for ultra-realism or kind of a cross between realism and cartoon fantasy. But as you look at the characters and you look at the animation and uh, the character models, it's unbelievable how lifelike they are. It's like watching actual people act on, on film. Hayden Pentier and some of these other actors I've seen in movies you know, over the years, I know these people, and I feel like I'm watching a movie, and I've caught myself on numerous occasions looking at the screen saying, wow, this is a game, and it really feels like that. There are lots of scary moments, crazy things happen, um, jump scares, like traditional modern horror, but as of right now, I really enjoyed it. I also bought another game, 
Brian Rabbit, you're old enough to know what this game is. Do you remember an old game on uh, PC years ago called Oregon Trail? Yeah. <laughs> that is real old school, like way <laughs> before right. my time. <laughs> All right, so check it out. It's on PlayStation 4 right now. Um, it's the Oregon Trail. I think it's called the the Collector's Edition for PS4. This is a PC game a few years ago that they made in the spirit of the original. Ago. Yeah. A few decades ago. No, I'm not, talk- I'm not talking about the original. I'm talking about this oh, version. Okay. It was made okay. for PC a few years ago. I never heard about it until now, but it's not the Oregon Trail. It's Oregon as in internal organs. Oh. Oregon oh, Trail. That kind of trail. And it's just like Oregon Trail, but they added all these different uh, play styles and mechanics of you walking through the woods and shooting eight um, eight bit zombies as they walk slowly towards you, and using your analog to aim. You're driving, uh, you know, in a 2D platform, trying to avoid raiders and all kinds of crazy stuff. But you're driving along. In my video I did today, Briar Rabbit had a broken arm. Uh, Robbie <laughs> forgot 12 rounds of ammo at our last stop. Oh, I said, damn no. it, Robbie! I'm so <laughs> Robbie, I mean, God damn it! You know, uh, uh, Kate caught gangrene. You got the ammo, Robbie. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Don't make Briar mad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that oh, no. uh, but I, I used to love Oregon Trail when I was a kid, playing it on the PC. You know, that was back when it was new in public schools. We got 30 minutes every other day or so to go into to the computer room when they were first new. And, and goof off on Oregon Trail, to me, was amazing back then. This is in the spirit of the original game. It looks graphically very similar. Of course, it's colored, but it, it, it's, it's, it harkens back to that old graphical style, but it feels just as fun and it feels very reminiscent of that old feeling. It's five, <laughs> or, five or six bucks on PlayStation Store. You can play it two-player co-op, couch co-op as well. Cool. I, don't, I don't think that you can do the online thing on it, but it's a very fun game. And I'm, I'm waiting until maybe I get done with Batman to really flesh it out. But I wanted to catch this sale while it still existed. And that's been my week. So yeah, I, I didn't. I, I kind of knew that there were other people who did this, but I didn't realize that you did this too, Beastly. Is you name people like when you have an option to name your teammates in a game, you name them after people you know too. Yeah. Yeah, I do that, I and do it, that too. I feel like it makes more of it. It gives you more of a connection to the characters. Like in XCOM, I did that, and when people died. I was bad. like, no, not Beastly. <laughs> <laughs> no. My family. Oh, was that the time you called me and said, hey, man, I just want to make sure you are all right. I said, yep. <laughs> I <laughs> killed your next call, but hopefully you're okay in real life. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I, I, do, I do that as much as I can. I always try to include you guys. I think in uh, this Oregon Trail game, you can you start off with a party of five, including yourself. So it was me, Kate, Briar, Robbie, and I put, not too nerdy. In Hopefully, it I remember the ammo next time. Yeah, you forgot twelve <laughs> fucking rounds, and we were surrounded by <laughs> so raiders and zombies. Come on, but it's really fun. I'm that game is really Robbie. awesome. Yeah, bullshit, man. It's always these Don't, young guys. Yeah, step up your virtual game, dude. Come on. <laughs> what were you doing? What were you doing to just leave a box of ammo sitting there? It was those porno mags, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. yes it was. Damn it, Robbie. You red-handed. All right. Damn, yeah, literally red-handed. All right. So, guys, uh, we, we, we had some pretty uh, pretty good news week going this week. I guess we'll start off by the games that are coming out this week. You guys already mentioned it. It's big, gigantic news. Halo 5 Guardians is going to drop on Tuesday. Robbie, you already said you're excited. Briar, you sounded excited. Dude, you like, I, if you asked me this question in August, I was not excited about Halo 5 Guardians. But as it's kind of come up, they've done a good marketing job, I think, is what's going on here. Yes, they have. They, they've given a little bit away in the trailers, like, you know, enough of a teaser in the trailers. Uh, they even have a teaser for, like, an animated series they have for yep. Reach, uh, which looks really cool. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Halo fan going back to the original Xbox. I bought an Xbox because Halo looks so good. And uh, I was not disappointed with Halo. And then I've kept up with the series pretty much until Halo 4, and then... Halo 4 I found to be pretty disappointing. I kind of dropped off the Halo bandwagon. But too, now, yeah. I'll tell you what. This game looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It's getting a lot of good press. I know the I didn't play the multiplayer uh, beta, unfortunately, but yeah. I heard great things from it. Uh, so I'm actually I'm actually pretty excited for this game. I'm looking forward to it. You definitely should be because Black Ops 3? Oh, you're talking about Halo. Okay. I know you oh, yeah, that's three. that's after. But yeah, I, I mean it's been so long since that beta came out. When was it? December last year, I want to say. It's been almost a year. And so they've obviously fine-tuned a lot of things. And 
it still looks similar. Like it still looks like the same multiplayer it was back then, but they've obviously changed a lot. And I just thought it was so much fun. Like it's different for a Halo game because BC, did you get a chance to play it? No, I didn't, unfortunately. Okay, so it's faster paced than uh, like even Halo Four. Like because Halo Four, obviously, they added sprint and stuff like that, and a lot of people didn't like that. I personally really enjoy Halo Four multiplayer, but Halo Five takes it to another step because you sprint forward and then you can like boost forward and stuff like that. Like the it's all about the movement nowadays, isn't it? Like you have like Call of Duty going with the exosuits and all this thruster movements, and now Halo's doing it. So it's very fast paced. It kind of feels like Halo, but it's kind of a new step forward. Well, you, you can look down sights now too. So yeah, but the thing is with that, it's more, it's still more hip fire because obviously when you get shot when you're aiming down sights, you go back to hip firing. So it's pretty. Uh, it's not like a deal breaker. It's hit or miss, they would say. Yeah. Well, well, for me, um, the, my, my, my oh no, yeah, it was gold, <laughs> wasn't it, Brian? It was gold. My thing with Halo, for me, that that first person shooter is different than other first person shooters in the, in the same genre, the same space. Games like Call of Duty, I'm not really interested in the story at all. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I'm more strictly uh, into that for the multiplayer. Personally, that's how I've grown with Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Halo, on the other hand, I'm so Anxious to get this story, yeah. Because the stories have been gradually getting better and better. Some have become more convoluted, but this one here, I just read a review on it. I just read an early review on it right before we started the show, and they reviewed it a no spoiler review at a nine point five out of ten. Who did Whoa. that? And that, and that was uh, I'm gonna look at my history. Is um, the review embargo up? Because I thought the reviews haven't gone out yet. Oh, well, I, I can look at my history and tell There's you. There's always but, somebody who breaks embargo. Yeah, That's well, true. Yeah. it was a 9.5, but it was just for the campaign. So it wasn't for the multiplayer. It was a campaign review. That's smart him. because, especially after the Master Chief collection, we got to see yeah, if they can actually. We got to see the multiplayer. Yeah. Multiplayer <laughs> drop it down to a three. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really excited to 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 see what they do with the story. Uh, I'm really anxious to see what happens with Locke. I'm anxious to see what happens with Master Chief. I want to get this story out of the way. My my dilemma is this. I don't know if Tuesday, if I want to grab it on Tuesday. Because right now, <laughs> you guys heard what I just said. I just bought these games, right? And you guys have known probably for the last month or two, I wanted to play uh, Until Dawn. I really wanted to play Batman. Now I finally got him. I know I'm not going to beat him within the next week, both of them together. There's no way. So I may end up waiting for a week or two to grab Halo. I'm super excited about it because I feel like this is the first, one of the first Xbox One games that will actually bring more value to an Xbox One that everybody wants. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the, the last games of the year that everybody's hyped about. Probably one of the most hyped games of the year. And I think it's going to actually live up to to the, the name of the franchise and really give people who own Xbox Ones a super high note. I hope so, man, because I was, I was really disappointed with Halo 4. I, di- I didn't really dig that game that much. Uh, even really going back to... Reach before that was it? Reach it was Reach before that. I didn't really dig that one much, and the the multiplayer kind of it didn't work for me in Reach either. So it's really been I think since ODST that I really had a Halo game that I I really got on board with. Um, so I'm hoping that three four three kind of captures that magic again. And like you, Beastly, the story is really it's at least important as important as the multiplayer for me. Absolutely. You know, like the yeah. first the first Halo game. When you first land on the Halo, right, and you're like, you're confronted with like those first fights, and you're kind of you get your warthog for the first time, and you know in the early missions you kind of do this like storming the beach thing with with a bunch of other dudes and your warthog, and like it, it was just so intense and so new and so fresh compared to basically what had become standard, like GoldenEye. You know, like GoldenEye had kind of set the standard for console shooters, but it really was an independent experience. It, uh, Halo, you know, it had these epic battles with tanks and warhogs and ghosts and all sorts of shit flying around. You know, there were some problems with Halo. Don't don't get me wrong, but, I mean, that, that game, I, I feel like, set a standard. Halo 2 came out. Uh, it just amped up the story. Halo 3 was... Um, I mean, the the story with Halo 3 got a little weird, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, it was kind of... Uh... Yeah, but, I mean, I really love the fiction. I I, bought, I read all the books with, of the Halo series. Oh, like, wow. I was that big into it. You're, I really you're enjoyed invested. it. Yeah, you were yeah. invested. And, uh, you know, I went and found all the skulls. I played 
the legendary modes. You know, I love those games. I love yeah. them just as much for their single players. I love them for their uh, multiplayer. So, Brian, so, you will drop Destiny for a few days to play Halo 5 this week. That's what I was going to ask him. Well, I play get... other games, guys. Since I don't only play Destiny. I'm so convinced. Like, you, you only play Destiny to us. Like, I don't know. Just wonder. No, we know you play other games, but very few and far between. You know, yeah. it, it is funny. I was actually thinking about it today. Um, is when I was a Call of Duty channel, when this was a Call of Duty channel, it's like Call of Duty multiplayer, you know, you'd play it for an hour a day, and you could get, you know, your fix for the yeah. day, right? You, you jump in there for 15 minutes. Yep. Uh, Destiny is a lot different. Is you know I put hours and hours every week into Destiny. I enjoy my time. I've got friends that I've made just in Destiny. You know, like <clears throat> these are friends who call me on my phone. You know, like it's amazing. You know, it, so Destiny is something different that I've never really experienced before. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing it's very similar to how people feel about uh, like Warcraft and MM MMOs. Is that they they've spent so much time in those worlds with those people. They know the uh, people. Yeah, that they've kind of like they built relationships in there. So Some Destiny's got a special place in my heart. Don't don't get me wrong, but Halo does too, and I'm I'm really looking forward to Halo. Hey awesome. Man, that's awesome to hear. I don't I don't know if I'll be grabbing it immediately. Are you both of you guys getting it on Tuesday? Or? I'm gonna get it on Tuesday. I think I pre-ordered it already, actually. Um, okay. like the digital version. Um, but I don't think you need to, right? It's like, no big deal. If you don't buy a Halo game day one, no biggie. You know, you can buy that. You can get that as a Christmas present. Yeah, that, that multiplayer is still going to be out. vibrant when you're playing it, you know, in January. Uh, the story is not going to get gone anywhere. And uh, they'll probably have put out a patch between now and then that fixes some shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's that big a deal that you don't play it day one. Yeah, okay. I have it pre-ordered on my Xbox One, like I said, so the moment the game goes live, I can play it because I have everything downloaded. Well, the it's moment... I see this new story a little later. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, as soon as possible. <laughs> so apparently there's going to be a 9 gigabyte day one patch. <laughs> That's a long Depending moment. Right? Internet connection may not be the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe be okay. the week. <laughs> yeah. Definitely going to play it the week it comes out. <laughs> yeah, I don't so know. Robbie, I think you got pretty good internet, though. Yeah, we have good internet. That won't be any problem. But for some people, that's definitely going to be an issue because a lot of these games have these huge, like, massive day one patches that add so many features because, especially last year, we all remember how many games came out incomplete or broken, and a lot of those had these huge day one patches to either fix things or add features in, and it's getting a little out of hand, I have to admit. Like, I can... Our internet can handle it. We have great internet, but... Not everyone can, and I totally understand that. And last year, I think we we might have been seeing the... It was the first year of the consoles, right? We might have been seeing developers really struggling to get games out on these consoles as fast as possible. That's definitely true. It seems yeah. like that that phenomenon is kind of lessening a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right, well, I got a question for you guys. We all know what the deal is with Halo. Are you guys excited or potentially picking up the Xbox One Elite controller? Go ahead, Robbie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was like, I, I, I heard him take a big inhale, so I just assumed he was going to start talking. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching. I, was just I watching. just thought Briar was going to go at it. But yeah, here's, I have a couple friends that are getting the uh, Elite controller, and I told them because a lot of them have never had like a scuff or anything like that. They've never used a controller with like the paddles. They've never used a pro controller. I'm like, it's an amazing controller, but it's going to take you some time to get used to because to kind of map your brain to using the back paddles, it's a little weird at first. And it looks like an amazing controller, but I pretty much have a scuff that does the exact same things, but I would certainly pick it up down the line, just maybe not right now. Yeah. Uh, some of the things that the Xbox One Elite does that the scuff doesn't do is it has a program right on your Xbox that allows you to adjust the sensitivity of the joysticks, the triggers, allows you to remap the buttons. Yeah, I love uh, so that. there are some features, just because it has the paddles on the back, there are some features that the uh, Xbox One controller, or the Elite controller has. Uh, and I think that it looks like a pretty damn nice controller. Actually, you guys know Boogie2988, right? Yep. Well, Boogie got a hold of one. I think they sent him one, and he did, like, a little first impressions video of it. And uh, he's not even really a console gamer, and he loved it. 
Yeah, I saw that video. He really seemed to be impressed with it, and I'm sure it's going to be an incredible controller. The only thing I've heard is because the paddles, like on the scuff controller, they're kind of in the middle, but the paddles stick out and kind of go onto the grips. Which I think is a better design as far as usability is concerned. But like you're about to say, you're going to activate the paddles. That's the only thing. But you know what you do to solve that is you just keep the case. It comes with a carrying case. If you keep the case on your desk or, you know, on your coffee table, you can set it down in the case, and that solves that issue. That's true, yeah. Hmm, that, that with a $150 good. controller, you want to have a case for it anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to have <laughs> all the parts. Like, it even comes with different thumbsticks, you, and it's all magnetic, so you can easily pop it off and put it back yeah. on. Like, it just looks like such a nice controller. I, I'm i very tempted to get it, but... I, ha- I have the Xbox... Actually, I was playing Xbox One today, so I have the scuff controller right here. Uh, and there are some things that drive me absolutely batshit crazy about this. To, if you want to adjust, there's trigger stops. Let me see if I they can fixed that first of all. I know what you're gonna say they have long fixed that. They right? long fixed that because oh, what you had to do is yeah. you had to tear off the back of the things here, and then there was a screw in there that you had to remove the trigger stop with. And now it how was, it works? Yeah, Briar. Now how it works is there's little pins on the grips, and what you do is you insert this little piece, like a little scuff key, and you can adjust the triggers from the outside. Oh, like, that's it's so nice. Easy. That's real nice. Yeah. They fix uh, it and quite a also, while. the uh, thumbsticks themselves, I don't really love them. But can you see that there's like a scuff logo on the thumbsticks? Yeah. Well, other than that, they're perfectly smooth rubber. Whereas I prefer to have like a textured rubber on them, uh, to kind of like if you're if you got even a little bit of moisture on your yeah, hand, you can slip right off. Yeah, you can feel it on there because it's perfectly. So I don't know that having the scuff logo is the optimal gaming experience, right? It's not the <laughs> optimal. It's not like, oh my god! It turns out that our logo is also the best possible grip for the top of an analog stick. It's a ma- It's a mirror. <laughs> like I'm telling you, it's a mirror. How did this happen? <laughs> How did this happen? Uh, oh my god! <laughs> so I like I I actually prefer with the Xbox Elite controller that there is there's not only a choice in heights of the stick that are you can just pop on and pop off with magnets but they're also textured and I like I think that's nice I've never really I loved my scuff for my Xbox 360 I thought it was like just about the most elite piece of gaming gear I've ever bought when I got the one for the Xbox one I was somewhat disappointed by it yeah. I've never had a Pro uh, or a Scuff controller, and um, I think this will be my year to do it. Briar, you mentioned Christmas. I know my wife is watching this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so start yeah. making that Christmas list up. Yeah, break out that damn purse, damn it, and spend my money. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> so it, it, it sounds like uh, this is probably going to be a really popular controller amongst Xbox gamers, especially being released at the same time as Halo 5. Yeah, I think they timed it really well with the release really of Halo well. 5. And once you get used to using like the like the, the back. back triggers, it's hard to go back to a normal controller. Like it I remember is. when the PS4 and the Xbox One were released, and I had gotten used to using the scuff on the Xbox 360, it was like, oh, this sucks, man. Like I got so used to having those triggers, man, it was like, this sucks. But... Uh-huh. I'm just thinking of uh, mapping a melee to one of those buttons, man, because I use uh, oh, tactical. Yeah. Melee and jump. And, and, yeah, because tactical, you have to take your finger off the analog and hit circle on PlayStation just to do a melee, and it, it's right. so frustrating because you're stuck in that animation. If you're not aimed at the perfect spot, you're going to miss that yeah. that uh, melee. So, yeah, yeah that, that sounds like something I'm going to invest in this year. For it's sure. a better design than having the face buttons. It is. It's just I, a better I, design. I, I and if, the, you're a, if you've got disabilities... You know, if you've got certain limitations with what you can do with your hands, like mm-hmm. it's also a beneficial thing. Yeah. Yeah, great point. Great point. I'm thinking that as time goes on and we see more and more hardware in the future, this will become the standard in, in home console controllers, man. Oh, I hope so. But it looks like that uh, scuff actually got a payout from my Xbox. So it looks like uh, Xbox might have infringed a patent on those back triggers because they what? announced that. Yeah, like. It was like a week ago that I saw on uh, Scuff's page that we are now like an official, you know, we're the official pro controller for Xbox or we're an official partner. So it looks like Xbox had to Did make some concessions some to Scuff who might have had a patent on these uh, these back paddles. Oh, awesome. Mm. Wow. All right, so guys, we got a little bit of news. Robbie, you want to get us started with this week's news, my bud? Yeah, so this is an interesting story. Uh, 343 Industries' Frank O'Connor 
spoke to IGN this week, and he said that um, when asked about a PC port for Halo 5, he said that basically it's not out of the possibility. They're not ready to announce anything, but he said because the Xbox One is now on an Intel platform, especially with like the whole Windows 10 thing coming, that it would not be very hard to make a PC port. And I'm going to make a prediction right now about this, because here's what I think. I think they're going to pull a Rise of the Tomb Raider on this game. I think Halo 5 is going to come to PC a year later, so probably fall 2016, around that October, November year. So it'll be a timed exclusive for the Xbox One, about a year of exclusivity, and then they'll announce the PC version, so it doesn't slide sales or anything like that. That's what I think. I think PC version is guaranteed, if they're even talking about it. It, well, it seems smart to do, for sure. Yeah. You know, uh, some, some of these developers don't like to port to PC, but that's something that Microsoft has been doing more and more of lately with their games. So I'm thinking that Robbie's probably right. Maybe a year, six months, we'll see something. You know? Yeah, they got to time Go it out well enough so it doesn't kind of slant sales, the Xbox One version. Like, they need to get it to the point where everybody who wanted to buy Halo 5 on the console has bought it, and then they'll announce the PC version so that doesn't change, adjust sales or anything. I'm trying to think of the Xbox One games that have been ported to PC. Dead Rising 3 has... Uh, Rise, Sun Rome has been ported, right? That terrible game, yes. Yeah, and so they're, they're doing it. Probably not as much as I, I thought initially, but it's definitely yeah. a possibility with Halo. They're but, saying let this... me give you guys a scenario real quick. Okay, so let's assume that PC sales are faltering and Mac sales are rising, which is the truth, right? Mm-hmm. That's a thing oh, that's Briar. happening. Here you go again. It's, a, it's, it's true, though. It's a thing that's happening. It is okay. true. Imagine Microsoft decides, look, one of our biggest sales opportunities for PCs is the gamers. What if we created an environment where the games that were developed on Xbox 360 or Xbox One also got developed on, you know, the Microsoft Windows 10 platform? Like, what if we created some kind of synergy here? Is is a guy who mainly plays on on uh, PC? Are they really losing an Xbox One sale if they if they release Halo Five at the same time on PC and on Xbox One? No. Hell no. They're just getting another sale. Yeah. I feel like I really I feel like it's a segmented community. I don't feel like guys who are mainly PC gamers, like guys who play PC games, I don't really feel like they kind of move between PC and console that much. I don't think so either. Yeah. I think there's like there's PC guys and yeah, like Steam, own. you know, there's Steam guys. I mean, there's some. There's some guys who play everything, right? And there's some guys who dabble in PC but mainly play on console. And there's some guys who mainly p- play PC but dabble in console. Agreed. But I feel like the majority of PC gamers are PC gamers, and the majority of console gamers are console gamers. And yeah, I think that if Microsoft were to release games. Day and date on both platforms, they'd be do, do, doing both platforms a, a good service. They already kind of are doing that, though, because you see with games like uh, Fable Legends, and they're doing that with Rare's next game, Sea of Thieves, those are going to be Xbox One and Windows 10 PC compatible. Like, you're going to be able to play with people on both platforms. So they're already actually doing this all in one thing, because mm-hmm. with the whole Xbox One and PC streaming and stuff like that, like, they're really banking on this, it actually seems. I would not be shocked, yeah, if Halo 5 comes to PC and maybe you could play with each other. I'm really not too sure how that would work. But they're definitely moving in that direction day mm-hmm. by day. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, since we got that out of the way. <laughs> Fallout 4 limited edition Xbox One controller revealed. God, what do you guys think about this? I haven't seen this yet. I'm looking at it right now. Let's, let's take I a will look. tell you live my reaction. We're, oh my god, I want that so bad. Holy We're shit! Buy it. <laughs> oh my god, is this a watch? Put it on the screen, Briar. So I, I try to put it on the screen. screen. You put it on the screen? <laughs> that was a there fast reaction there, Briar. Oh my god, it's Holy beautiful. shit, that is awesome. <laughs> it's got the Pit Boy. It's got Top. it's got like a yellow and blue theme to it. Yeah, Robbie, so it's got it up. Make some, up. Make some yeah. noise, Robbie, so it stays so on obviously the screen. Most of the controller, you can see it's got this blue outline and some of the things like the D-pad... The uh, different parts of the controller are gold as well, which looks very nice. And, of course, you've got the Vault Boy right there. Oh, I think it's a really cool-looking controller, wow. but it's very limited. You have to buy this on Bethesda's store, I believe. It's probably sold out by now, unfortunately. But Oh, I think... man. So. That's fucking beautiful, man. Yeah, I like that quite a it's bit. Like, like looking at a piece of 
just beauty and artwork. Did you see the watch they've got? No. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. It's in the same That's article. Cool. Wow. Oh, was the watch in there too? Yeah, I'm the watch jealous. is in the same article. Yep, I gotta open it again. Hold on, I messed up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there we go. And then there's like a there's a messenger bag too that looks like a pit boy. But the the messenger oh. bag is kinda lame, but the watch is. is kinda cool. Oh, Vault Tech. Wow. Isn't that cool? I don't know about the wristband, though. Yeah, the wristband looks pretty cheap, but... Yeah, I mean, it looks like they actually itself, made I that like. in the vault, you know? <laughs> Damn, that's, that's, that's another piece. Wow. I wonder what this shit is running, man. That controller, I want that controller. I think I'll yeah. be on eBay to it out. I don't know, man. The Xbox definitely 360 a... control, or the Xbox One controller is... I, you know what? <laughs> Playing with my Xbox One controller, Briar, I've mm-hmm. got to say, man, I like the PS4 more because of the, the design seems to be form-fitted for my hands a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But the Xbox One controller, I really don't have any complaints. No, I, I, don't, I, like the, I don't like the, the looseness of the thumbsticks. feels weird to me. Mm-hmm. I don't like the shape of the triggers. I don't like where they fall. On how, the they, how they hook up like that? Yeah. yeah I, don't like the, I don't like where they where they land on my fingers. Like, the controller feels too small for my hands. It's like in the and center the of your finger controller here. didn't. And I also don't like the shoulder buttons. Like, you gotta, you really gotta reach up for those fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll admit the one thing I, I think really that reach up for those fuckers, fuckers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that got real creepy real fast. That boy is a fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Expect more right, of that so, in the future. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty fucking... Okay, guys, so continuing on, High Moon Studios may be assisting Bungie for development of Destiny 2, according to reports. That's great news. Yeah, Destiny I mean, we 2? know that they helped Bungie Hang it up on now. the original game, and they uh, helped with, out, out with like, the DLC and the Taken King, and this is this is definitely true, I think. I definitely think they're going to help on development, because obviously, like, they got a lot of stuff coming out because they have Destiny coming out, and then they had obviously the expansions of the Taken King, and then a year later they have Destiny 2. Like, they're consistently putting out so much content that I think having a second team to back them up is great. And with what we've seen, what High Moon Studios did with the first Destiny, like, they did a good job. So Yeah, well, they've proven themselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, anybody worth their salt should get a second, second roll of the dice. The fact that they've helped Bungie releasing all this other content and gradually through the course of, you know, since the release of the game, the game has gotten so much better with this content, who wouldn't want them to work with them? They but, already show, already so the thing it. with Destiny, I think, is that I don't think that Bungie predicted how much effort it would take to make this game. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think they did a good job with, with like, that, pr- that prediction, right? Is like, the original release, I think, was lacking content in a lot of gamers' eyes. And then the Dark Below and the House of Wolves were the same. I think they figured that out. But now they need to... They they know they need to add more to this game. Like, there just has to be more. Right? Yeah. That's what gamers want the most out of Destiny is just more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Say it so again, Briar. When they... By getting more people in there to help with this, I think that's that is really helpful. Mm, okay. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I love Destiny. I haven't played it in weeks, though. I'm I'm feeling more burnt out on this game than I ever have before. Like, there's just... There's so much grinding to do in this game. There's all these missions that constantly pop up, all these different weapons, like, even for, like, Touch of Mouse and, like, the Sleeper Simulator, I'm just... I just don't care anymore. Like, I'm just... I'm burnt out on Destiny, and I'll always love the game, and I'll go back and play it occasionally. So you're, but... you're burnt out again already? Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know why Destiny doesn't hold me. Like, I don't, especially for something like the Crucible, I feel like compared to, I know this can be a weird comparison, but Call of Duty, Call of Duty, I always felt like I was enjoying myself. I always felt like I was doing something and I'm being rewarded. I'm constantly leveling up. Multiplayer is so fast and fluid. Black Ops 3 multiplayer, I love the feel of it and I can't wait. But the Crucible is so frustrating. Like, it's just the lag and the just the cheap shit that goes on in the Crucible. It's just, everything is so repetitive. Like, I just, I don't want to play it anymore. I, for now, I'm just putting the game down again. I'm, I've had enough of Destiny. I, I just, I, I, I'm burnt. I think, I think Bungie uh, is kind of planned, a contingency plan for this kind of uh, acting out like Rob is doing right now. No, they need kidding. more variety of content. No, the, they the, need the, different stuff. The thing stuff. is, they always bring you back. 
So it's okay. They to get start, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's okay, to get, it's okay to get burnt out. I don't think they care whether or not you're playing the game every day, all day. All they care about is whether or not their expansions are moving or the game is selling. And the game sells, and every expansion moves. And when they these expansions when they come out, everybody's super excited about it. Everybody loves them. Everybody goes crazy over them for for weeks and months. Then, of course, it gradually dies down again. And by the time it dies down, the hardcore is still into it. Then, hey, look, we got another expansion coming. Bam! Yeah. It's like restarting the fucking fire, and, and everybody's back on it. Yeah, so I'm I, definitely not. I understand not... where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from, Robbie. I felt that way numerous times playing Destiny, uh, where I've lost it. I just didn't want to play it. The difference, though, this this time around is that they're kind of time gating the release of new new weapons, new exotics, new new missions. Like we're still getting new stuff. Uh, and what the? How old is this DLC at this point? Two months, three, two and a half months. No, it's just over a month. Yeah, no, but a month, here's the thing: even with all about. these new missions coming out, like I just don't care. I've played so That's much fine. of it. I mean, yeah, I'm just not dumb. everybody wants to play a game for months at a time, and yeah. you know that that's okay. I, you know, I do. I when Call of Duty was my thing, that's what I played. I played Call of Duty. Every yeah, once in a while, I diverge. I play a little, you know, Thief or. Uh, Tomb Raider. Or Are you sure about that, Roger? <laughs> but I come right back to Call of Duty. That's just the kind of game I am. I like that. You know, I like that consistency. I like having something that I'm familiar with. Uh, and Destiny to me is a little bit different because uh, every week I get a little something different out of Destiny, and I really like the cooperative play. Like that. That's super cool. But not. It's not for everybody, and it's okay that. Do you feel like you got gypped out of forty dollars by buying the Taken King, Robbie? No, absolutely no, not. Like, I've so it, that, I've like every non right? Yeah. It's like you don't have to play Destiny exclusively for the rest of your life. That's not what video gaming is about. It's about making doing what makes you happy and having a good time. So mm-hmm. now that Halo is coming out, you got another game. Uh, soon we're getting Fallout Four. That's another game. You know, oh, we got yeah. Call of Duty coming up. It's like we just got game after game after game. And that's there's why no I haven't way played Destiny because there's so much all out. those new games yeah. for everybody. But for you know maybe for me I'll be playing Destiny and I'll be playing Fallout 4. I'll come back to Destiny. You know maybe I get so into Fallout 4 that I forget about Destiny for a month. Who knows? Oh, wow. But, you know it's like you don't have to. There's no not like I don't even know if Bungie wants you playing Destiny every day. You know <laughs> it's like a grind. You know like I don't I, I don't know. Well, but I, I don't see anything I, wrong with like. Waiting for Destiny's next DLC though, like it's no big yeah. deal. I think played, played it for months, had a good time. Move on. Right, like, Briar, I love your enthusiasm for Destiny, and I love like don't get me wrong, I love Destiny. I've put hundreds of hours into the game, and I love the social experiences. But it's like with the Taken game, like I played it nonstop for like the first couple weeks, and then I'm like, yeah. I'm just gonna take a break. Like I'm not feeling it. I've just burnt myself out on this game. And I love what they have, but after a while, it just gets repetitive because you're kind of doing the same thing. Well, and I love. The passion and enthusiasm for Destiny, but for me, I'm just, I don't know. For, for me, it's like this, right? I can go play Destiny right now and have a fucking blast. To yeah. me, there's so much stuff to do. Uh, Kate loves playing it. Whenever I jump on, we're together. We jump online, see who's online, and play the game. I've, I don't feel like I'm necessarily burnt out, especially with the Taken King. Taken King has given me much more replayability than I've ever seen in the game. Uh, it, like it's right a now, much deeper experience. I feel, experience like, yeah, I feel like right now I can go play Destiny and have just as much fun as I had as soon as the Taken King came out. It's just so much to do, so many things to see. It's just awesome to me right now. But there so, are other games coming out, and that's yeah, well, that's, also that's the my that that's me. my thing, though. You know, I, I stopped playing Destiny because I got other games to play. And I want to have other experiences, too. And, and sometimes when those games get stagnant, I'll go back to Destiny and play it again. But, Briar, one thing you said in that whole uh, conversation really struck me as amazing, that you had myriad things to, to name off, and you named Thief. Why did you say <laughs> Thief? No, I, I'm just, I was just... Uh, Briar, I'm still waiting for your Thief Let's Play channel. Where is it? He got it's halfway through done. another. It's, it's almost, almost done. Actually, I sold that game. I don't even have it anymore. <laughs> I hated that game so much. He like, said, I, I play other it. games. I play Thief. I was like, holy shit, he didn't just say Thief. Uh, that like, was I'll good. tell you what, like the the next game that's really got me excited for like a multiplayer experience is got to be The Division. Like that game coming up. Like I've been looking forward to that. When did we first see that game? Was it 2013? E3? Yeah. E3 yeah. 2013. I am, yes. Oh, man. I can't wait for that game. Hopefully it lives up to all that hype, man. Me too. And like I'm really concerned that it's not going to because I feel like even though the press who's seen it kind of like 
took a step back on it. Mm-hmm. Like, whoa, maybe this thing ain't what we thought it was. Because well, it's just that, time has gone on, and it's been years we've seen this game, like E3 2013, then 2014, then 2015. Yeah. This game is set to come in March of next year. If it gets pushed back to not, another couple months, that'll be like four E3s that it's been at. Like, we've well, seen so much of this damn game. I want it to it, just come out. This game is, is, is supposed to be so huge as far as what they expect you to be able to do in it. The kind of network open world. It's kind of like an MMO first-person shooter that looks f- just graphically phenomenal. Let them take their time. I don't mind them taking their time as long as they release a product that works and stands on its own as what we wanted it to be. You know, nobody knows what the division is. So our first impression is going to be hard for that to live up to what we think it is when we don't even know what it is. My but, expectations I mean, are pretty high for this game, though. Like, it, from what they showed at that first E3 demo, even the second E3 demo, I thought were a little disappointing. I feel like they pulled back on some of the features. Yeah, it was kind of the same thing again. Like, I remember it, I think it was 2014. Like, they pretty much showed the same thing they did a year before. 2015, though, it looked a lot different. Like, they changed quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. When a game goes through development that long, things are going to change. Yeah, and, but, I mean, a, a big game has to go through for a long time. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the they're building... Will be the next Destiny for you, Brian. That's what I'm thinking it's going to be. That's what I think they're <laughs> shooting for. I think more and more developers have seen what Destiny is... I mean, you'd have to be an idiot not to sit back and, and respect and take recognition of what Bungie has done with Destiny. It changed okay. the game. It yes, changed it the game. I, you know, you can see all the faults you want in Destiny, but, but it changed the game as far as like a like a multiplayer online experience. Like it's one of a kind. There's yeah. nothing else like there it. There is so nothing else for, like for it. For developers to see that and see how much revenue this game is generating, all the excitement it's generating, how the developers are still back in it and adding new shit to it constantly, there's somebody out there with a lot of money and a lot of talent that's going to do the same thing. And I'm hoping that the vision is one of them. Uh, I don't want to get too off subject because we are running short on time. <laughs> so you know, guys, we're passionate. I love it. We talk about games. These guys yeah. watching us know how passionate we are, and I don't mind us rambling on. But no. Square, Square Enix will continue remaking existing IPs. This is some awesome news. For my guys and girls up there who love Square Enix games, I'm right there with you. I'm really happy to hear this. That means games like Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger, all the Final Fantasies from way back in the day had the potential possibility of being remade the same way they do a Final Fantasy VII. You guys let us know in the comments what Square Enix games would you like to see remade on current gen consoles? Are you guys fans of any old Square Enix games? Don't say Ur guys, the fighting game, because that sucks. Um, I'm a big fan of a lot of Final Final Fantasies. I mean, really going all the way back to seven, six. Uh, I would love to see eight remade, nine remade, Final Fantasy twelve remade. Uh, just really awesome games that really resonate with me, resonate from my past. And I think with the success of what's projected in this Final Fantasy remake, Square is really smart. They should do a poll, find out what people want to see the most, and then remake those. I think Chrono Trigger a remake would be fucking insane. If anybody knows about Chrono Trigger, you know what I'm talking about. It would be just yeah. as big, if not bigger, than Final Fantasy VII. Uh, Chrono Cross would be a big deal, and I think Square needs to capitalize on that because other companies have been doing it for years. I think that Square would be a good a good fit to uh, re-release or remake some of their old, their old franchises. I'd rather see them make new games. Yeah, well... <laughs> 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 tomatoes, tomatoes. Yeah, I guess so. You know, I mean, I guess it's not for everybody. Just kind of like the Destiny thing. I would love to see remakes of some of these old games with new spins on them. Not, you know, shot for shot remakes. I'm not trying to see Psycho remade all over again. I want to see the uh, futuristic, newer version of an old game or an old franchise with new mechanics that make sense in this, this day and time with the hardware we have available. That's what I'd like to see. Continuing on, since you guys had a lot to say about that, I guess I've covered all angles. YouTube Red subscription has been announced. So this is YouTube's new subscription service that you pay for that eliminates ads. It gives you ad-free YouTube service. Uh, you uh, I'm sorry. Basically, everybody just tuned out when you said you had to pay for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nope. Continuing on. <laughs> nope. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Beasley. What, what, I know. what are they uh, charging for this service, Robbie? Ten dollars a month, and I think oh, another. That. Yeah, and I think another thing they said is that there's going to be a couple like exclusive video series or something. Like, here's the thing: a lot of people don't like YouTube ads. A lot of people use what's called ad block. They use that to. It's a basically an add-on for your browser that you can basically disable ads on every website. But the thing is, to all you guys, you have to consider out there that there are people 
who even do YouTube as like a full-time job, and they make money off these advertisements. Like a lot of people, they depend on some of these ads to make a living. And mm -hmm. when you're disabling Adblock where you're buying YouTube Red, I'm not saying it's a bad thing or it's wrong to do. I'm not trying to discourage you from that, but you have to consider that people make a living off of YouTube and that ads, they are very dependent on this stuff. Like it's important. Well, it really let, is. Let me say this. As someone who makes money on YouTube, I think ads are important. I think there's a time and a place for them. And I think that if, if an advertiser makes engaging enough ads, people will watch them. Personally, I look for that five-second mark. Skip now. Bam. But every now and then, you see an ad that is good. Geico does them all the time. I love <laughs> Geico commercials. Where the you guys like just hanging there like they yeah. can reframe, but they're still running video. <laughs> I mean, when they say shit that really confuses you and you just sit there and look like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> They said, you can't skip this ad because it's already over. And it wasn't over. I was like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> on the table with a family sitting there, and then the dog just came and started eating the guy's dinner. I was like, what the fuck is going on? It yeah. was some of the – Geico makes the best commercials. I will sit and watch their commercials over and over again. I will get – you know, I will pay somebody. I will watch Geico all day long. Just just do what Geico does if you guys want to promote your, your, uh, your products because they really make engaging and funny shit. I, I, I just love Geico. So for nine ninety nine, what do you get? You get you get to skip the ads. You don't have to watch any ads on YouTube. You get uh, premium access to premium content. The only one I really know about is like PewDiePie is doing like a uh, like a reality horror series where people are just gonna try and scare the shit out of them. Apparently, like in his everyday life, is that does that sound right to you guys? Ah, uh, so he's he's aware of it, but somehow it's still considered a reality show. He yeah. knows that people are going to be scaring him, and somehow it's supposed to come off as a show. I don't know exactly the format of the show. Gotcha. I, I know that I'll be watching the first episode to at least check it out, though. All right. Um, and you get access to YouTube Music. Okay. Yeah. So for nine ninety nine, there's actually a lot of value there. Uh, YouTube you know, Music. What what is that service, Brad? I've never heard of uh, it. It's Google Music, basically. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't think you. Nope. Yeah, because if I really want to <laughs> listen like, to you, guys, you, I prefer to steal my music. <laughs> I don't <laughs> do not. I, I listen to music on YouTube. I'll just go to like a, a soundtrack or something that I like, and I'll just play it, you mm -hmm. know, right there on YouTube rather than. Yeah. But my question is this: If people don't opt in to pay for this service, are they going to increase the amount of ads? Are they going to do that? That may be a possibility that might really piss people off. I don't really think there's going to be a whole lot of buy into this, to be honest me, with you. Me I, I mean, this is like the PlayStation Move of YouTube. I, I think what YouTube would like to do is kind of get like some kind of premium content, like what Netflix and Hulu have been able to do, where they actually are creating mm -hmm. their own content. Uh, you know, if all of a sudden YouTube was able to make a House of Cards style uh, yeah, show, right. like maybe they could get something like this to fly. I, I mean, PewDiePie is really popular. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. PewDiePie versus House of Cards. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not talking bad about PewDiePie. I have a lot oh, of respect yeah. for the dude. Same here. Same but I don't here. know if he can carry a subscription kind of way. Yeah. the way yeah. that House of Cards can. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's definitely a difference in that content. I mean, uh, you think about it. Daredevil, House of Cards. Yeah. These, these, there's a lot. Right, you know that these premium services are offering, and really, YouTube hasn't really established anything like that at this point. Yeah, a lot of people you might want to really... like start off with something. Maybe give yeah. this PewDiePie series a shot for free. Yeah, for free to bring and people. Say, in. Okay, PewDiePie season two. Two, you gotta pay for it. Now we're we're moving this to the YouTube Red service. I agree with that. Yeah, but that's uh, what they should do. A lot of people are freaking out because they think they're going to make less money. I don't think it's really an issue. People freak out anytime there's a change to YouTube at all. People have spelled it. Doom and Gloom for YouTube, YouTube before. Who cares? Mm. Who cares? This isn't the first time people have uh, spelled Doom and Gloom for YouTube. No, every, as a time, whole. every time they make any change at all to YouTube, everybody freaks the fuck out. Yeah. It's like, it's calm down. Just sit back and look at it. Observe it. Just, it'll be fine. So, <laughs> let's, let's really analyze this. Wait a minute. They're asking people to pay for YouTube? Yeah, we don't have to worry about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is for my people up north uh, who, who get cold in the wintertime and don't have anything to protect their feet. If you pre-order Fallout 4, you will get a free pair of socks. Boom, there you go. It's right there. See that? Fucking Hold socks. On. Dude, the Fallout hype is real. <laughs> Holy shit. I want those socks. They are giving away socks 
<laughs> yeah, the worm company <laughs> sucks. You guys can see this without the Vault Boy heads on them. Mm. You can put just about that Vault Head Boy on anybody. Oh, man. <laughs> on anything, and they're going to sell it. They're going to sell this it, is, man. This uh, is exclusive to Best Buy as well, so that's how you're going to get your free I have a t-shirt that looks just like that. <laughs> really? <laughs> but if I saw one, I might buy it. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I, I think that um, Bethesda, they, they got a really good thing going here. Everybody Guys, just, hold on a sec. We have to address this. This sure. guy is spamming shit out of our chat. He needs to be banned. I've told him to stop. Hussein Masak, please stop spamming. You right, need well, to stop. I can't see him. I don't want to if see you him. go onto the YouTube stream, he has been spamming a lot. We don't appreciate that at all. Please, can you just stop doing that? All right, anyway, let's move on. Something hurt my spirit. Was that a spam? All right, so continuing on, guys. Just Cause 3 has gone gold. Are you guys excited about Just Cause 3? Absolutely. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Yep. That's going to be, oh, man, Just Cause 2 is so bad. Woo! I mean, that, feeling, that feeling of being on a, a moving vehicle, like a Jeep or a car, and tethering like a helicopter or a plane to it and watching the, the turmoil and the tragedy that happens when those two are tethered <laughs> yeah. together, that's just the kind of power you don't give regular people. And I'm so excited to see what that'll be like in Just Cause 3. I, I think the game looks really good. Uh, there hasn't been, if you ask me, as much hype about it as I would have expected, but there's been so many other AAA titles announced. It kind of it's sucking up all the hype. There's like a big... Death Star called Fallout 4. It's like pulling in all the hype from all the other games right now. But Just Cause 3 will, I think, be a, a really good game. As, as long as they keep it in the same spirit of what the, the franchise has been, I think it'll be a good game. I mean, Just Cause is awesome. It's like uh, an open-world Grand Theft Auto game, and it's like set in a tropical island, and you just blow shit up. Like, it's it's just fun. It's pure fun. I love those games. They yeah, are... they, they just amp the physics style up to, like, a million. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, like, let you it's go so at it. See what fun. crazy shit you it's can blow so up. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this next story kind of hurts my heart. Uh, for people who love their Vitas, like Colin Moriarty and Greg, Greg Miller, Sony confirms it has stopped first-party development for the PlayStation Vita. It's over, guys. It's, it's 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 over. I don't like to spell doom and gloom, but let's be honest. That's it. Yeah, that's, pretty much that's, done. It's done. It's a wrap. It's over. I mean, if Sony confirms it, yeah, it's over, man. I mean, it's done. That Vita, better find a nice place on your cover to sit that thing. It's going. You guys think that Sony would possibly do another handheld? No. Is it possible? No. I, I, I think it's over. I think the the mobile market has. It's just too much of a behemoth. The, the 3DS, Nintendo really has a pigeonhole on the handheld market. And then you think about phones and mobile devices. It's just, it, the Vita could have been amazing. It really could have. It's great hardware. I think that Sony is the reason that the Vita failed. I think Sony had so many awesome franchises they could have ported to the Vita. They could have created awesome games for it. They could have made put Infamous on it. You know, They could have continued on with Uncharted. Look at how Golden Abyss was. It was a, a console quality Uncharted game on the Vita. We knew from the time that the, that the Vita was uh, released that it, it could port console quality games to it. You could put real console experiences in the palm of your hand. Two analog sticks. They let these numbskull developers create Black Ops Declassified, Resistance, the Resistance uh, for Vita, I'm trying to think of the, the last part of the name, terrible first-person shooters on the handheld, a handheld that could be played the way that we play at home on our consoles that basically des helped destroy the legacy of what the Vita could have been. The PSP was 100 times better than the Vita, even though the PSP can't compare to the Vita as far as hardware goes. Sony dropped the ball, and they let the ball roll all the way down the hill into the fucking sewer, and I blame Sony for this. I think it's Sony's fault that the Vita failed, and, and I think that, that really that's it. Sony could have got some developers on it. They could have put some really good games on it. Instead, they just did nothing but indies, and ports a PSP games and PlayStation One and Two games, instead of you know putting talented developers on that system and saying, hey, look, we want more console quality experiences on this system. That's how I feel. Yeah, yeah just I don't think it's. I don't know. There's really a market for handheld game systems anymore. It was when I. Didn't have to work so hard. <laughs> no, no, I was constantly working. I'm constantly busy. I remember back in the day, I could 
play on my my PSP like everywhere I went. Now it's like they're just sitting around just collecting dust. I just feel like, God damn it, I hate being an adult. It sucks. I used to just Word, happen. brother. Word. Say it in your deep yeah, voice. Fist Say it in your deep voice. Word, Word brother. brother. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Nintendo may reveal its first mobile game over the next few days. Oh, shit. This could be, uh, I don't know, man. Nintendo really um, has everything on lock with the 3DS. Everybody's really excited about the potential of the NX's new mobile device. I don't know about this whole mobile DNA thing, man. What do you guys think? You think it's going to be a, a, a good deal or a deal breaker? I'm looking forward to seeing what it is. I mean, if it's a cool game, get to start getting Nintendo games on our iPhones and Android phones. That's <sighs> cool, man. That's It'll cool. Take, to me, it's going to take the magic of what that 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 series or that character was, and throw it out the window when you gotta when you Why? only have your screen your fingers to control it with. You can't play a Nintendo game with your damn fingers. Come on, now, you, you don't know about, that. You don't know that. You can't play That's any bullshit, good game with your fingers. That's bullshit. You, just because you expect them to make another Mario that has like a cross, you know, a, a uh, D pad and an A and a B button, you don't know what they have ideas for. I mean. There could be it could be anything. It could be another Mario Paint that you, you draw on a screen with. It could be anything. Well, Come on, right, give them a little credit. Let's at least see what they've got before you you spell out the doom and gloom here. You know what? You've turned me around. One eighty. <laughs> I was looking the other direction, and now I'm looking back at you. Thanks, I'm glad buddy. You're looking, baby. Yeah, you're, you're you're absolutely right. Um, I'm glad you're looking, baby. <laughs> you know, I love that sexy <laughs> voice of yours. Yeah. Um. The, my thing was. And you're absolutely right. Whenever I think of Nintendo, I think of the games that we've seen. I think of what we've seen in the past, their old consoles. When you think of mobile devices, you think of the 3DS, you think of the DS. And my first thing that comes to mind is, imagine fucking Mario on your phone. Yeah. And that automatically makes me like, oh, God, I don't like playing games on my phone. I'm going to hate this. But you're right. It could be a point-and-click Nintendo adventure. It could be a Telltale type of game in the world of Zelda. Can you imagine that? You know, what if it's a Geometry Dash type game? You guys played yeah. Geometry Dash? I played I Geometry are, Wars. Geometry Dash is a endless runner. Well, it's not endless. It's like there's levels, and it's got it's got the music synced to the level. So like as you're bouncing around, like the music is synced. It's a really fun game. It's really hard. Uh, you know, it could be something like that. Who knows what it could be? The world is wide open. They have a new control scheme. We know Nintendo can design around a new control scheme. They've done that in the past. Hmm. Let's see what they do. Okay. Let's see what they do before we get upset. All right. Okay. I think that's gonna do I'm it, no guys. longer upset. I'm no longer upset. I feel better. Like Why are you feeling like better, man? Why are you feeling better? Robbie, how do you feel? How do you feel, Robbie? Feeling good? Feeling good, Robbie? Come on over here, Robbie. Get him close next to me. Hold on, hold on. Look at Robbie's eyes. He is fucking fun. <laughs> he's fucking doing stuff over there. I think he's after somebody. <laughs> he's got that Canadian Rambo look in his uh -oh. eyes. Uh oh. Holy shit. I should check the chat. I got a Don't, don't, don't check, don't check it, Briar. Look at Robbie's <laughs> eyes. Robbie might fucking do something to you. Look, look at me. Holy shit. As he's looking at the screen, I see hair growing on his chin. He is pissed. <laughs> he is pissed. Don't worry, that chat will disappear <laughs> once the video goes live. Yeah. Oh, All man. right. So I think that's going to do it for today's video or All today's right. podcast. Uh, what else? Anybody got anything they're looking forward to this week? I'm looking Halo forward. To play, I'm looking forward to to uh, playing and finishing until dawn. The game is really awesome. I if you guys haven't played it, I recommend you give it a try. Uh, it's it's different. It's different than what we're used to playing, and it's different in a good way. I'm happy it didn't come out on PS3. This game was actually going to be released as a PlayStation Move game years ago, and they canceled development when the PlayStation 4 was announced. And I'm happy that they did that because it, it's right at home on PS4. It's really awesome. Looking forward to playing some Batman Arkham Knight. I'm looking forward to punishing Robbie and making him go back and get those fucking bullets in Oregon Trail. <laughs> Guys, we got to play some Halo 5 this week because that is all pretty right. much all we're going to be playing. Like, we got to okay. pick it up and play. Absolutely. If you guys are going to get on it, I'll, I'll go ahead and grab it. I'll put these games to the side. I'm going to get on it. Oh, I'm going to get on it, baby. Oh, oh, yeah. Get on oh it. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That doesn't get old. That doesn't get old for me. <laughs> Damn, that's good. Wow. I need that voice for my wife. Also, deep talking. I'm deep talking. 
<laughs> oh shit! I'm gonna wear that button right out. <laughs> Hey, man, loan me that voice for tonight, man, when I go to bed with my wife. All right. <laughs> That's going to be some hardcore shit. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh, all right. I think that's going to do it, guys. Should we sign off? That ends it. Thanks, fellas. Y'all have a good right. week now. Have a good week, guys. We'll see you next Bye, week. everybody. Thank you so much for watching.